Hey guys, it's Faye from Solar Flow, and I'm back with another video. I'm also back with a different chair <laughs> because I think the other chair that I had been sitting in made me look like I was slouching all of the time. So I'm actually in a normal chair and not like a lounge chair, even though I'm all about that lounge life, but c'est la vie. So um, the video that I'm doing today is one that I am super excited about. It's a topic that I've actually wanted to talk about for a while but I had other videos that just felt more pressing. So I allowed the information for those to come in and um, I allowed myself to put those up first. And now I'm getting to a topic I'm so excited about. This is a video all about walk-ins, what they are, <laughs> why do you care if there are walk-ins? How do you know if you've actually encountered, <clears throat> excuse me, how do you actually know if you've encountered a walk-in? So. If you guys don't know how the information comes in, I sit down, I meditate. Sometimes information comes in. Sometimes I ask for specific information to come in. This is information that came in on its own. And then as I always do before I sit down to record a video, I meditate just to raise my vibration, get me into the proper zone. And I asked for any additional information that I had not picked up in the past for me to share today and I actually got some great gems. So what are walk-ins? Walk-ins are when a person's soul entity is either shut down and dormant inside their body or they actually leave. Why, why would that happen? Well, there's a number of different reasons that a, a person's soul essence either shuts down, goes dormant, or would actually just step out. And here's also the question, when that happens, what does happen? So, as the information came into me, sometimes a soul incarnates and they're like, no, N no, just no, no, just no. <laughs> they're just not having it. They either don't like the situation that they've incarnated into, or they, they're just, they're, mm -mm, they're just, the way it just literally came in was like, mm -mm. so what they do is a, the soul's essence shuts down inside of them and they go into a kind of autopilot. So how this would actually look in somebody is maybe as a student, they have no motivation. They don't want to learn. They could be unruly. They could be lazy. They don't want to do their homework. When they're older, it might also come in as somebody who, again, they just have no drive, no motivation. They don't want to get a good job. They want a job that allows them to just coast by. The reason for that is they're, as I said, they're shut down, but their Kundalini is also so um, trapped that there's no physical expression um, there's no life force energy beyond what they need to do just to survive. So somebody like that, because they are so shut down, they are allowing entities to come into them. But here's the thing. Also, when you have somebody like that, um, they're, because their energy blueprint is so suppressed and so low, um, entities from the etheric realm are not even attracted to them. They don't even want to come into people like that. So you might have somebody that's not a walk-in per se, but you can encounter people that are just so shut down that they're, it's like, you know, the, the expression, the lights are on, but no one's home. It might be a case where the lights are on and no one's home. So somebody like that, I wouldn't necessarily say are a threat to someone else's well-being. Energetically, they can be a bit of like um like an energetic black hole because they're just drawing things in because they're so like dead inside. So for somebody like that, maybe not like the biggest risk, maybe not somebody you just want to hang around. Now there other ways that people do get shut down to attract entities into them is in a case where let's say there's um, abuse. When you have a child and let's say there's 
uh, sexual abuse or physical abuse or some abuse of any kind, what the, how it was shown to me was people like that have a very rich inner world because their outer world doesn't feel safe. So they can have imaginary friends, they can have um, just a very rich inner world that they can retreat into. But because they have imaginary friends, it was shown to me something is happening and a little girl is laying there. She's tapped on her wrist by her, it could be her higher self, it could be one of her imaginary friends, and they're like, come on. So they are, as a self-protective mechanism, they are taking the soul's essence out of the body. So this person is now experiencing trauma and abuse, which is causing them to disassociate. They step out and because they are young and energetic and they have a rich um, private life to pull from, their energetic blueprint is a lot more enticing to an etheric being that wants to come in. So they are leaving themselves open and prime for beings to come into them. They are also, again, as a self-protective mechanism, they've tapped out, they're gone. They may come in, they may come out when it feels safe, but they are already hosting the capacity for other entities to come into them. If you've heard of something called multiple personality disorder, or I think now it's actually called <clears throat> a disassociative identity disorder, and both of those names um, are apropos, but for different reasons. So first of all, in the um, academic world, if there's no understanding of the etheric realm and um, seeing behind the veil, then the way that it is perceived and understood to people in psychology and academia that are studying this, it is it does look like it's somebody who has different um, expressions of themselves known as personalities. So hence the word or the title multiple personality disorder. But how do those personalities get in? they get in because the person is traumatized on an ongoing basis. So they are constantly disconnecting from their body. They're getting out. They are who they are. Their soul essence is very fragmented and it is very, therefore, porous. Like, what's the best way to think about like, I don't know why I keep seeing like um, in a bathroom and grout, like if you have just laid down tiles, but you haven't like grouted it and sealed it, a whole bunch of gunk and shit can get in there. So it's really being shown to me that way that because they're so fragmented in their own self identity, because they're constantly getting out of it or being pulled out of it, they're so porous that so many other entities can come in. So what ends up happening is, they manifest, is that the right way of putting it? It's not the right way, they're not manifesting anything. It, it, it appears as if they have multiple personalities. It's actually not multiple personalities. It's multiple entities that have been allowed in to the vessel because the person is gone and they are so porous. Now, you will not only necessarily encounter um, a walk-in from somebody that's been abused when they were younger. So the way that some walk-ins actually, and, and, and all the walk-ins that come in are expressed differently depending on the age of the person when the walk-in actually comes in. For older people, um, let's say someone in their 20s or their 30s, they, also can allow entities into them. And the way that that happens is, if somebody um, is drinking all of the time, so for example, I did a video actually on Las Vegas, you'll see that, where um, 
when when a person imbibes in alcohol or recreational drugs or even if they take like a lot of sleeping medication what happens is they are not fully in their body so because of that entities can come into their body somebody like that is actually very attractive to the entities in the etheric realm that want to come in. And the reason they are so attractive is because they are older, they probably can drive, they have um, more financial means to go and do things. Therefore, they are a very attractive host body for these entities to come into it. And if you've ever seen somebody, um, like many years ago, I had a friend that was so drunk that he would literally so first of all he would become like a different person when he would drink to excess and in essence he actually was because he was inhabited by a different being but also people like that can get so drunk that they black out when they black out it is where their the um being that has come in has inhabited them inhabited them so fully that their soul's essence get completely knocked out of their body. So the way that it kind of is, is um, if someone is drinking or they're doing drugs or anything like that, again, they are so um, loose in the way that their spirit is inhabiting their body that it is allowing for things to come in. But they're still in their body. They might be Think about it like if you pick up a friend and your friend says, I want to drive, you would maybe jump over from your driver's seat to the passenger seat. That's kind of what it's like when someone is still inhabiting their body, but a walk-in can come into it. They just get pushed over to the passenger seat and the walk-in is now in the driver's seat. So this walk-in has this body and boy, are they going to have a good time in it. Um, so that's where people can get into a lot of trouble because it's, it's not necessarily them. Now, which is not to say that anybody gets a free pass if they are doing things and the walk-in has inhabited them. Absolutely not. Nobody gets a free pass and I'm going to tell you why. Um, especially when they're inhabited and they're an older being. They, while they may not be in full capacity of their body, they have created an environment in which entities can come in. So it's either somebody that drinks to excess, it's somebody that does drugs to an excess. So they have really made a very inviting vessel for entities to come into it. So they're not getting a pass because it's like, oh, well, they weren't in their, they weren't driving their vehicle, so to speak. And if anyone's like, well, I don't remember or no, I, I don't, it wasn't me. I mean, I, I drunk, I drank too much. It wasn't me. Sure. Yeah. They were in the passenger seat, but they, again, created this environment that was very enticing for these entities to hop into. So nobody gets a free pass. Now, how do you know if you've met a walk-in? Because we, <laughs> we've all met them. So the degree in which you've met them can vary. How do you know if you've met one? And there's a couple of different ways. When you have a walk-in that's in somebody's body, uh, somebody's body, there's a delay from when you may say something or try to engage in a conversation with the person, there will be a delay in which they will respond. And that's because there's like a quick shuffling of energy where the entity that has hopped in doesn't know how to engage with you in the same way that the person would. So now this entity has hopped over into the passenger seat and they've quickly like thrown the person back into the driver's seat. So it's like a, a delay where the person's like, hmm? Um, you'll also know if you've met one because there's, there can be like a, a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde um, 
way that the person shows up in life where if you see them on an ongoing basis it's a, it could be a good friend of yours um where you may not consciously realize it but you're kind of always wondering like who's going to show up today which which version of this person is showing up today and that's because it's literally like well what <laughs> what version is showing up today is it the person is it one of their entities which entity could it be these entities can um have their own um personalities so they're coming in what personality is getting shown to you when you're in, interacting with a person um the other way that you can know so i'm i'm big into this um how do you feel when you're with the person our intuition will tell us everything we need to know based on how our body is responding when we're with a person. So do we feel calm, at ease, safe, where we can just kind of like, where your, does your nervous system feel relaxed and regulated or do you feel dysregulated? Because you, if you are feeling dysregulated, it's a sign that something is not right. It could be that the person is um, not themselves, where a walk-in has come in. There's uh, other various reasons why that could be the case. But in this specific instance, you're going to feel it in your body. Even if your conscious mind has not registered it, your body will know. So do you feel like you want to get away from the person? Do you feel like um, a t like a tension in your stomach? Do you feel like there's a pit in your stomach? Do you feel like there's a million butterflies flying around your stomach? Do you feel like the hairs on your arm and on your neck are standing up? Like those are some ways that it could manifest to you. If you are with somebody and that's what you're experiencing, again, because the conscious mind may not register why that is the case, maybe not question it. Maybe just be like, I'm going to listen to my body and I'm going to disengage right now. I'm going to leave. I'm going to find a reason to get out of here. It's a self-protective mechanism for your body to communicate to you something is not right. When you can take yourself out of an environment where something is not right, you can have the space to unpack it and figure out what it was. So when your body is trying to tell you something, listen. <laughs> also, what I wanted to kind of touch on was what happens to the hosts of these bodies when they have been porous and allowed entities to come in for a long time. So how it was shown to me was a, a woman. I don't know why it showed me a woman but it specifically showed me a woman in a nursing home. Um, actually, I think I do know why. Maybe it's because uh, young girls maybe can be um, exposed to a lot of like sexual abuse. But anyway, it was shown to me as an, a woman, an older woman in a nursing home, and she is completely lost and befuddled. She's like just walking around. She has no sense of where she is and how she got there. And the reason for that is, as the body ages, these entities that are coming in, they do not want older bodies. For the same reason they wanted the body when it was young is why they don't want it when it gets older. So when you're young, you have financial means, you can drive, you can come and go as you please, you probably live on your own, you're not under like your parents' roof or anything like that anymore. But when you're older, so your body is not as abled as it was when you were younger. So that body is just not gonna cut it for them anymore. And also older bodies don't get the same attention that younger bodies do. So if an entity wants to come in and it wants to have like crazy fucking sex, I don't know if I can say 
that word, but I did. But if an entity wants to come in and that's what they want, a younger, attractive body will be the perfect host for them to have at it. An older body has, first of all, physical limitations and it doesn't get the same level of attention anymore. They don't want it anymore. So they're out of there. See ya. So this person now has, is so lost to themselves and they've never developed so many parts of themselves that when these entities leave, they are identityless to themselves. So I'm not saying all of these people are going to end up in a nursing home, but it is where think of any person that is lost to themselves. Maybe on some level they can kind of like get through the day, but they don't have the self-awareness or the skills to live a full and meaningful life. So I hope that answered questions you may have had or maybe didn't even know that you had. Um, I would love to hear from you guys. If this video has resonated, comment below if you've ever met a walk-in <clears throat> and how did you know? Or how did you not know? And does this video resonate with you? And give a like, share it with someone you think it would resonate with and please subscribe because I am on a rock and roll sharing lots of videos and you'll know when I put a new one out. So thank you again for watching and until next time, stay in the high vibe.